It is a little device really worth 150 euros and should you really buy a hardware wallet even though there are cheaper alternatives out there in the market, I say yes. If you want to know why I say so and how I come to this opinion, please stick to this review. I bought this Ledger device with my own money, so this video is not a sponsored video from Ledger and all opinions are my own. If you want to find these products I mentioned in the video, the links to all the products are found in the video description. You will surely ask yourself why you have to buy a crypto wallet in the first place, why you have to spend money for a crypto wallet, even if there are a lot of options out there in the market that offers you wallets for free. And this is a very valid question. Let me explain it to you in the next section of the video. The short answer is because this nice gentleman says so and recommends it. Andreas Antonopoulos has been an absolute and above all independent expert in the Bitcoin and blockchain space for over 10 years now. If you have your crypto on a hardware wallet, that is a fairly high level of security. No, but joking aside, a hardware wallet has many advantages over a free wallet such as on a smartphone or over wallets from an external service provider such as Coinbase and Binance. The security of your assets is a very central argument for these little devices. What does it actually mean to own cryptocurrencies? It means that you have the so-called private keys that allows you to transfer cryptocurrency to other addresses. And where are the private keys if you use services like Binance, Coinbase or Bitfinex? Yeah, exactly. They are not with you, but rather on the server of the service providers. Because Binance managed so many private keys, this naturally makes it very juicy for hackers to attack Binance. And what about free wallet softwares like Exodus on smartphones? It's way better, but the private keys are stored on the device memory of a complex device. And can you be sure that the private keys are stored encrypted or that the hacker isn't stealing your private keys via another app on your smartphone? Well, you can, and this is where hardware wallets come into play because the private keys are only and really only stored on the device in a secure environment. The private keys never leave the device and are safely stored by an extra security chip. It is almost impossible to 99% to steal your private keys digitally from these devices because you always need the device and a password for it. The current premium model from Ledger looks really good and has a good build quality. The metal and plastic feels valuable, the two buttons have a good pressure point and the size is okay so that you don't lose it or you can attach it to your keychain. By the way, the Nano X does not have a fingerprint sensor even if it looks like it. Installing something like this securely in a hardware wallet will be really exciting in the future in my opinion because technically it would offer another target for hackers but it would be another step towards making hardware wallets easier to use. However, the build quality is not Apple quality and sometimes it squeaks and cracks a little bit. A circumstance I can forgive, but it should have been implemented better for a 150 euro product. The 128 by 65 pixel OLED display is twice the size of the Ledger Nano S and offers so much more space for apps and transaction details. The display is not a touchscreen, which would not be ideal given the small screen. The USB-C port is great, so you can connect the Nano X to all modern computers and smartphones. This is also possible with a USB-C to USB-C cable. But we don't necessarily need that because the Nano X has a small battery and Bluetooth functionality as a unique selling point compared to other Ledger products. This makes it really fun to use the device on the go. If you like the review up to this point, I would really appreciate if you give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. The Nano X uses two computer chips under the hood, a security element and a microcontroller. The security element contains a sensitive data such as private keys, your PIN and the 24 word recovery phrase. The microcontroller acts as a chip between the security element and your smartphone or computer. In short, the private keys which I talked about earlier in the video are safely stored and generated on the device and never leave the device. Okay, but what about Bluetooth? Isn't that an unnecessary risk? No, it shouldn't. The private keys remain on the device and as Ledger itself writes in a detailed article, this does not pose an increased risk. Also, Bluetooth communication is end-to-end -end encrypted. You can also temporarily turn off the Bluetooth on the Ledger Nano X. If you want to use the hardware wallet completely without Bluetooth, then buying it here makes no sense at all. There's a good alternative with the Ledger Nano X S Plus, which otherwise has all the functionalities of the Nano X. Let's talk about the software and the reason why I use a Ledger wallet for over five years now as my favorite wallet. The software on the device itself is kept simple and you only interact with it when setting up the device for the first time and when confirming transaction. Even if the display is large and the writing is easy to read, the software seen on the display is not the only software that Ledger offers to you. Now we are talking about the Ledger Live app. It's a comprehensive app for Windows, Mac, Linux, Android and iOS. 
It serves as a user interface for most actions with Ledger, like sending, receiving, and managing the coins, tokens, or NFTs. The range of functionalities is huge. Virtually all coins and tokens are supported through either native wallets or integration. Several sub-accounts per coin are possible. Staking is offered for many proof-of-stake networks. Coins can be swapped with each other directly in the app. And there's even a Ledger-owned app store to carry out various action in the crypto and Web3 area. Coin support is another interesting point. If you don't plan to just use the wallet app for buy and hold strategy with Bitcoin or Ethereum, because Ledger offers you the possibility to store and manage more than 100 cryptocurrencies and tokens. It can either be stored directly and natively in the Ledger Live app or via an integration with the respective wallet of the coin. Ethereum tokens and NFTs are also available through this. The big advantage and difference of the Ledger Nano X to its predecessor Ledger Nano S in this area is the ability to store up to 100 wallet and apps on the device at the same time. With the Nano S at the maximum it's only possible to store 5 or 4 wallets in the same time. You have to manually uninstall and reinstall the wallets again, again and again. And let me tell you, this can be really really annoying and time consuming. So if you are someone who wants to have multiple coins and wallet available at the same time and quickly, then you will love this feature. But there are not only positive things, there are also things I don't like so much. And so let's start with the navigation on the device. The two button navigation is a popular method used by Ledger to provide input to the device. The buttons are okay, and I think it's implemented better than with the Ledger Nano S or the Bitbox 2, but creating the seed phrase is very time consuming due to this operation. In my opinion, unlocking the Ledger with the eight digit pin code could also be improved. I understand that this provides a certain level of security, but in the future, I wish that there were more user-friendly solution with the same level of security. The battery is a little weak in my opinion. If you trust the statements from Ledger, you can get through a whole day with a battery or when you use only standby for several months. Since the model first came out in 2019, I would really like to see a battery update here. The price is not exactly cheap with just about 150 euros for this device. But without a question, spending money for a hardware wallet is always a recommendation for me because it is an investment in the security of your coins. Nevertheless, compared to Bitbox 2 with 129 euros, Nano S with 59 euros, Nano S Plus with 79 euros, and several devices from Trezor, it is worth taking a look at the competition. Coming to my conclusion, is it worth spending 150 euros for this hardware wallet? Yes, absolutely. The premium model from Ledger offers good build quality and security function, a large device memory for many apps, a USB-C connection, Bluetooth, and of course a very extensive and very good software environment, which is constantly being further developed. This is really great and shows that the French company listens to the feedback of their users and evolves as a professional provider. If you don't need the Bluetooth functionalities and don't want to spend so much money on a hardware wallet, you can also take a look at the Ledger Nano S Plus, because with 79 euros, it offers all functionalities from the Ledger Nano X, but without Bluetooth and without the battery. You can also find the link to this product in the video description. No matter how you decide, if you really are serious about investing in cryptocurrency and want to store your cryptocurrency safely, you should definitely take a look in hardware wallets. I hope this video gave you some clarity about the Ledger Nano X and all the functionality it offers to you and gives you a better uh, option and whether you want to buy a Ledger Nano X or some other hardware wallets. And if you like my video, please like it and I see you in the next one. Bye.